Howdy folks, got a fun little combinatorics problem for you in today's Wrath of Math lesson. If you find these videos helpful or interesting, I hope you'll hit that big red subscribe button so you don't miss the hundreds of lessons I've got coming your way in the future. Given a positive integer n, how many ways can we write it as an ordered sum of ones and twos? That's what we'll be going over today. I certainly suggest trying to figure it out yourself before watching the lesson, but let's get into it. It's a pretty straightforward solution. Quickly, let's just see an example. Positive integer 3. That's a pretty cool positive integer. How many ways can we write it as an ordered sum of 1s and 2s? Well, certainly, for any positive integer n, we could write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. So that's one of the possibilities. For 3, we could also write it as 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1. Those are the three ways that we could write 3 as an ordered sum of 1s and 2s. And I apologize, this is going to be one of those lessons where I use the same words over and over again. Usually it's the word set, but in today's lesson it's going to be sum one and two. We'll be using those words a lot. So here are the three ways we could write threes. An ordered sum of ones and twos. Note that we're counting ordered sums. So we count one plus two and two plus one separately because even though the sums have the same terms, they're in a different order. We're counting ordered sums. Okay, so how are we going to solve the problem in general? Given any positive integer n, how many ways can we write it as these sorts of sums? What's going to help us answer this question is by thinking of each term in the sum as a possible position where we could put a 1 or a 2. And we want to start from that really basic sum of 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. So let's begin explaining the general solution. Like we said, given any positive integer n, we can certainly write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on n times. That will certainly give us one way of writing any positive integer n. We can just add a bunch of ones together. One way to think about this is that there are n positions in this sum, right? Because there are n copies of 1, we can think of each term in the sum as being a position. So one way to kind of think of this is n choose 0. There are n positions in the sum, and we're choosing 0 of them to be equal to 2. And so this tells us n choose 0, that's equal to 1, and so that means there's one way that we could write n as a sum of just 1s. Pretty straightforward. Remember, this is a binomial coefficient. I'll leave a link in the description to some lessons I have on binomial coefficients. But quickly, if you're not familiar with them, this is read n choose r, and it's equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. But really, to get the most out of this lesson, you should probably already be familiar with this. All right, so n choose 0, blah dee blah dee blah There's one way we can write a positive integer as an ordered sum of just 1s, right? There's no way we can change the order here because all the terms are the same. So then what if we want to include a 2 in the sum because that's another possibility? Well, if we want to include one copy of 2 in the sum, we're going to have to get rid of two of the current positions in the sum. We're going to have to get rid of two copies of 1 so that the sum is still equal to the same thing when we add that 2. So we lose two copies of 1, that's losing two positions, but we get one position back when we add the 2. So now, we originally had n positions in our sum, we lost two positions but got one position back, so now there are a total of n minus 1 positions, and among those n minus 1 positions, or terms in the sum, we can pick any one of them to be our copy of 2. So you can see here we're using these binomial coefficients, which count combinations, to count the number of ways we can order the sum for a given number of copies of 2 that are going to be in the sum. So for a positive integer n, there are n choose 0, or one ways we can write it if we're going to have 0 copies of 2, and there are n minus 1 choose 1, or just n minus 1, ways to write it as an ordered sum of 1s and 2s if we're going to include one copy of 2. And this pattern continue, continues. 
If we're going to include a second copy of two in the sum, then again, we're gonna have to get rid of two of the positions. We need to get rid of two of the one terms so that the sum is still equal to the same thing once we add in another copy of two. So in total, every time we add a copy of two, we have a net change of losing one position in the sum because we lose two copies of one and we get that one copy of two that we're adding. So if we add another copy of two into our sum, then we go from n minus one total positions to n minus two total positions. And of those n minus two total positions, we can pick any two of them to be our copies of two. So there are a total of n minus two, choose two ways that we could represent n as an ordered sum of ones and twos when we've got two copies of two. And so then we just continue in this way to count all the different ways that we could write n as an ordered sum of ones and twos for every possible number of copies of two that it could have going from zero copies of two to one copy of two to two copies of two and so on. And so now the question just becomes, where do we stop? What's the maximum number of copies of two that we could have in a sum for a positive integer n? Well, that's pretty straightforward if n is even, right? If n is even, then certainly the maximum number of copies of two that we could have in a sum that equals n, if n is even, the maximum number of copies of two we could have in a sum is n over two copies of two, because of course the twos cancel out and the sum would be equal to the number n that we want. For example, if n was an even number like four, four over two is equal to two, and so the maximum number of copies of two that we could include in the sum is two, two copies of two. So if we're just concerned with even numbers at the moment, our sum would stop at our positive integer n minus half of n, uh, choose half of n. So we would have n minus zero plus n minus one choose one plus n minus two choose two plus n minus three choose three and so on all the way up to n minus half of n choose half of n. So for the number 14, for example, it would be 14 choose zero plus 13 choose one plus 12 choose two and so on all the way up to 14 minus seven, which is seven choose seven, and that's where the sum would stop. That would count all possible ways we could write 14 as an ordered sum of ones and twos, and the different terms in this sum are separately counting the number of ways that we could write it as a sum for different numbers of two that are going to be in the sum, for different numbers of copies of two. So then what can we do to this solution to adapt it for odd numbers as well? Well, if our number n is odd, then of course we're gonna have a bit of a problem, a little bit of trickiness going on here. If we have the number seven, for example, seven over two is three and a half, and we can't really have three and a half copies of two in our sum. We can only have twos and ones. So we might say, okay, well then we gotta round three and a half. We either have to round it up or we have to round it down and that's where we'll stop at that number of twos. If we round it up, then we would have four copies of two and we would try to write seven as an ordered sum of ones and twos, including four copies of two. But since we rounded this up, that's too many, that's equal to eight. So then we'd have to subtract one, but that's not allowed because we're just adding ones and twos. We can't do any subtraction. So we have to round down. We have to round down and using some nice notation, we can use what's called the floor function. A lot of you are probably familiar with the floor function. Some of you might not be. All it is, is it takes the number inside of the function, in this case, seven over two, and it spits out the nearest integer less than or equal to what's inside. So the nearest integer that's less than or equal to three and a half is three. So the floor of seven over two, just seven over two rounded down, is equal to three. So we would stop at a maximum number of copies of two of three. That's as many copies of two as we could possibly have in one of these ordered sums that's going to be equal to seven. 
So that's what we have to do with the odd numbers is we have to divide them by two and round down and that's where this sum would stop for odd numbers. That's the maximum number of copies of two we could have. One more time, for an even number, the maximum number of copies of two we could have in our sum is half of the number. And for an odd number, the maximum number of copies of two we could have is half the number rounded down. Now, the very nice thing is that for an even number, like eight for example, 8 over 2 is equal to 4. If we plug that into the floor function, the nearest integer less than or equal to 4 is just 4. In other words, the floor function doesn't change the value of an integer. So we can apply the floor function in all cases, whether n is odd or even. If n is odd, the floor function is going to do what we need it to do to bring the decimal number down to a nice integer. And if it's an even number, the floor function isn't going to change anything because an even number divided by 2 is an integer, and so the floor function won't change it. And so, my friends, this is our solution. Now, if we write it as a nice sum using summation notation, we're saying the total number of ways that we can write a positive integer n as an ordered sum of ones and twos is equal to this. It's equal to the sum from i equals zero to i equals the floor of n over two, which is just half of n rounded down, this sum from n, or it's the sum of n minus i choose i from i equals zero to half of n rounded down. That's the total number of ways we can write a positive integer n as an ordered sum of ones and twos. Pretty cool, fairly elegant solution. So let's check out a couple quick examples and you'll find there's something rather surprising going on here that you certainly don't want to miss. So once more, I just wrote the sum that we just explained here, just for our nice handy reference. And remember that each term in this sum for a given value of i, for example, i equals three, that term of the sum is counting the total number of ways we can write n as an ordered sum of ones and twos, where we have three copies of two. So each term in the sum is counting the number of ways we can write our number n using i copies of two. So for a few quick examples, how many ways can we write one as an ordered sum of ones and twos? Well, there's only one way. We could just write it as one. How about two? We could write two as one plus one or just two. So there are two total ways, one plus one or two, two ways we could write two as an ordered sum of ones and twos. How about the number three? Well, we saw at the beginning of the video that there are three ways we can write three as an ordered sum of ones and twos. So let's just go ahead and try using our formula, see if we get the same answer. We would start at i equals zero. So that would be three minus zero, choose zero. And then we would increment up i by one, so we would have three minus one, which is two, choose one, and then we wanna keep our eye on where we have to stop. We have to stop at three over two rounded down. Three over two is 1.5, rounded down with the floor function is one. So we have to stop here where i equals one. What's this sum equal to? Three choose zero is one, two choose one is two, so it's one plus two, which is three, which is the same thing we saw earlier, so that looks good. So three is the next term in the sum. One more example uh, with our formula. How many ways can we write four as an ordered sum of ones and twos? Well, we start with i equals zero, so that's four choose zero, and then we just bring this number down one, this number up one. So three choose one, and then this number down one, this number up one, two choose two. We want to remember where we have to stop. We have to stop at half of our number n rounded down. Half of four is two, rounded down is two, where i equals two, so now we stop. What's this equal to? Four choose zero is one. Three choose one is three. Two choose two is one. This is equal to five. Beautiful. All right, so I'll stop there as our last example of applying the formula. Uh, for example, just to quickly mention it, the next number, five, if we wanted to use this sum for the number five, 
5 over 2 is 2 and a half. Rounded down is 2. So the sum would be 5 choose 0 plus 4 choose 1 plus 3 choose 2. And then we would stop there at half of 5 rounded down, which is 2. The next few terms in this sum, or excuse me, the next few terms in this sequence are pretty cool. The next term happens to be 8. The term after that is 13. The term after that happens to be 21, and then 34, and they continue in this way. Now, I certainly uh, encourage you to fact check me on this claim about this sequence. You know, try using our handy dandy formula that we explained. What are these numbers? Do you recognize them? Maybe you might recognize them if we place a one right at the start, just for kicks. Those are the Fibonacci numbers. What the heck are they doing here? Who invited the Fibonacci numbers to the party? Pretty neat. So why are they here? We'll talk about that in a future lesson. We'll basically just solve this problem again, but in a way that makes very clear why the Fibonacci numbers are here. Take some time to think about it. Let me know in the comments if you have an idea why we're seeing the Fibonacci numbers here. And this isn't just uh, an aberration or an aberration. I can't remember how that word is pronounced. This is going to continue to be the Fibonacci sequence. And it's uh, pretty clear why once you realize what's going on. So I'll explain that in a future video. Hope this video helped you understand how to count for any positive integer n, the number of ways that we can write n as an ordered sum of ones and twos. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. You can find links to those down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest map lessons on the internet.